G'day, Adam here from the Google Docs product forum here to talk to you today about conditional formatting which is a feature in Google Sheets that allows us to highlight certain cells in a spreadsheet that meet a certain condition so that we can visualize our data better. Uh, but in particular I want to talk about this new option down the bottom here which is custom formula. Um, being able to use a custom formula to set conditional formatting has been an eagerly awaited feature and it's been introduced in the latest version of Google Sheets. Um, it can be a little tricky to implement at first and wrap your head around so um, I've decided to use today's tutorial to go through it step by step. So we refer back to this form that we've got set up for our friend Ted who's uh, selling off his toy penguins to uh, fund a trip to Australia. If we highlight his revenue column, um, we look at the auto sum down here, he's amassed 153 bucks, which is, which is not bad, but he's got a little bit of work to do. And he'd like to identify the big spenders amongst us, probably to target marketers, um, uh, by using conditional formatting and, and highlighting the rows where a person spends more than, let's say, $25. Now if we were just to highlight the cells in this column that are greater than 25, that's pretty straightforward. We don't actually need to use a, uh, a custom formula for that. We can use one of these um, existing comparison operators, so greater than 25. We'll format the uh, background green. It's applied from D2 to D7 because that's the range that I highlighted before we came to this dialog box. Save rules. And you can see that the values that are over 25 have been coloured green. Now, to apply that uh, formatting to the whole row requires a use, to, use of the custom formula. First of all, we're just going to use a, use a custom formula to achieve this same task. So if we go back to conditional formatting, we'll delete this rule, add another rule. Instead of greater than, we're going to use custom formula is. Now, the formula that we use is pretty much the same type of formula that we use in a spreadsheet cell. So it will start with an equal sign and essentially just has to evaluate to a Boolean value, either true or false. It can actually evaluate to other types of values which will be coerced to true or false, but for the purpose of today's tutorial we're going to aim to just have expressions that, uh, that either uh, come out as true or false. In this case we're going to say D equals D2 is bigger than 25. Again, we'll set the background to green. It's applied to range D2 to D7. We'll save rules and we can see it works. Now, if we go back into it though, it's um, probably not totally clear how this applies to this. And my, my probably main tip when, when uh, using conditional uh, custom formula and conditional formatting is whatever formula we use here, is applied to the first cell in this range or probably more precisely the top left cell in this range because it could be over a number of columns as well as we're going to do in a moment. So the equals D2 is bigger than 25 is applied to cell D2 in this range and then copied down to D7. To demonstrate this in a spreadsheet and this leads me to my second tip so we'll copy this formula here out of that dialog. Don't be afraid to use actual spare spreadsheet cells to test out your uh, custom formula and conditional formatting. So essentially what I've done here, I've got um, A1 down to D7. We're going to call this four, these four columns here um, sort of a replication of, uh, of the data over here, but invoke our uh, custom formula in these cells. So if we were to line it up with D2, I'm just going to edit mode, paste that formula, equals D2 to D bigger than 25. We can see that evaluates to true, which is which fits with what we're seeing here because the conditional formatting highlighted this cell green. Now, if we were to fill it down, and as I showed you in the last tutorial, you can use Control D in this mode. The other, another way of doing it is just dragging the little blue square. We can see the population of the um, the formula down the column and again all these boolean values are lining up with what we're seeing in the conditional formatting. If we go to view and all formulas and another way of doing this with keyboard shortcut is control back quote we can see that when we fill the formula down that all these uh, cell references have been updated accordingly and that's because we've used a relative reference. 
So instead of um, absolute referencing where that D2 would be co copied down the column, it's uh, updating correctly. But remember, our final aim is to try and highlight whole rows. Now, if again I was to copy this formula, escape out of that, and we're going to apply it to this whole range now with conditional formatting, we'll delete this rule. Again, we'll add a rule. Custom formula is, we'll paste equals D2 is bigger than 25, set the background to green, and this time we're applying it from A2 to D7, the all, all four columns, and save rule. It's not quite working for us because we've just got the cells in the A column uh, highlighted here. Now, why is that? Well, again, we use a mock-up over here to demonstrate what's going on. I'll paste that formula in. Another way of copying formula uh, formula across uh, a range, particularly a two-dimensional range, is to hit Control C to copy, highlight, and then Control V. And you can see why it's not working. It's because we uh, we're referencing the D column here, but as we move over, it's moving to the columns to the right. E2 is bigger than 25. F2 is bigger than 25. What we want to see here, if we toggle the formula, is whole rows of true or whole rows of false. In other words, we want to see this um, cell, the D column referenced in every cell here. And of course, the way to do that is using absolute referencing. So if we highlight D2, another handy keyboard shortcut is to use F4. So hitting it once will make row and column absolute. Hitting it again will make row absolute. But what we actually want hitting it again is column absolute. We'll invoke that. Control C fill across the range, and that's more like what we want to see. We want to reference the D column in every single column here. If we toggle off the formula, you can see whole rows of true and whole rows of false. So let's see if it works. Again, we'll copy that, go back to our conditional formatting, copy it in with that absolute reference, save rules, and there we can see it work. We've got whole, column, whole rows being referenced here. Now, Another tip that I won't go into right now is that we can actually use open-ended ranges here, which is handy in a lot of cases. But in this case with uh, form submissions, not only will this closed range work as it is at the moment, but it'll actually update as we enter new submissions into the form. It'll actually um, uh, make this uh, last row go further and further down. So that the form submissions, in other words, is automatically growing this range. Just to demonstrate, we go back to the form, double unary hide, or well, we have to make him order more than 20, uh, $25 so we can see it working. So we'll say he's you know, order 12. Ted will be very appreciative. Submit. And you can see he's been populated down here. Um, the conditional formatting is working. And if we go back to it, we can see that it's now being applied from A2 to D8. So the two big tips there is uh, to make sure that this, uh, make it clear in your mind that this formula relates to the upper top left cell in the range that you're applying to, to and uh, don't be afraid to test out your formula in spreadsheet cells, spare spreadsheet cells. And thank you for listening.